Thank there we you. Go. We're in business. Okay. Um, so this week's small business essential webinar is profit and loss statements. Let's get it done. My name is TJ Daniels, and I am the director of the Iowa Center's Women's Business Center. The Iowa Center's Women's Business Center is funded in part through a cooperative agreement with the U.S. Small Business Administration. You will receive an email after this event from my colleague, Sierra Smith. Thank you for attending today's session, information on how to connect to our speaker, as well as a form to complete. Please do us a big favor and take some time to fill this form out. This information allows us to continue providing free information, uh, free educational programming for small business owners in Iowa. Now, please take some time um, and locate the chat functions on your Zoom screens so you could join the conversation by asking questions or adding comments. Also feel free to introduce yourself and your business in the chat and include your website or social media page so we could visit and learn more about your business and network. Now, a little bit of information about today's speaker. Um, today's speaker is Alex Polzine, and a lot of you may um, be familiar with him already. Um, Alex is responsible for the Iowa Center's accounting and governmental reporting. He also helps with lending, education, programming, and coaching provided by the Iowa Center. Um, and Alex, if you would like to go ahead, um, the screen is now yours. Okay. Well, thank you, TJ, and thank you everyone for joining us today. We're going to talk about how to build a profit and loss statement. Um, today, we're going to be focused on the Excel template um, that we use to create profit and loss here at the Iowa Center. It's something that we really um, encourage clients to look at when they're kind of digging through their own processes and, and what's best for them. Um, my name is Alex Polzine. I'm a CPA, uh, Director of Finance and Administration here at the Iowa Center. Um, I've been a CPA for about 10 years now. Um, before nonprofit work, I spent many years in public accounting, doing small business taxes and accounting, and then uh, several years in corporate corporate accounting before that. Um, so hopefully I can bring some insight and some good advice into um, how to help you build your, your profit and loss statement. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, at the Iowa Center for Economic Success, our mission is to empower Iowans with the potential to succeed as they pursue opportunities for financial success. We do that by providing small business education, capital opportunities, and network um, resources. Uh, and so today we're doing a little bit of education. Um, so this is how to prepare your P&L. Um, again, uh, my name is Alex Polzine. I love accounting. It makes people cry. I don't love it because it makes people cry, but hey, here we are. It can be pretty frustrating. It can be complicated. It can be stressful. Uh, and, and so that is kind of the why behind why we're here today. We want to take some of that fear factor away. We want to take some of that confusion away um, and really give you the tools you need to build your own profit and loss um, state for your business. So quick overview on bookkeeping. You cannot build an accurate profit and loss statement. Keyword is accurate um, without good bookkeeping uh, processes in place. And so the first thing that we would like to recommend when you are trying to develop good bookkeeping habits is to open up a business bank account in the EIN number of your business. Uh, the reason you can do that is you can start to separate your personal and your business funds a little bit more naturally just by what debit card you use or what credit card you use or what checkbook you use. It's really important not to commingle your business and personal funds. That's the fancy IRS term. Um, if you were ever to be audited for your business and have to present your personal bank account to sift through everything business and personal in an audit with the IRS, they're gonna to start to get really frustrated. They're gonna to start to get really, um, Scru they're going to scrutinize more and more heavily because they know you haven't started, you haven't separated your business from your personal life. And so things are going to get more messy, more confusing and le less clear. And so the first step is to open that business bank account, open a business credit card, if that's something that you think you can use, um, and then develop a strategy for recording your business transactions. Again, if you have already opened your business bank account, it's pretty easy. Just be diligent by what card you use, what account you use to incur your expenses or to record and deposit your revenue. Uh, you know, consider an accounting software. If pen and paper doesn't work for you, if the Excel template doesn't work for you, if your business has grown too much and you're, you're drowning 
and manual bookkeeping transactions. Accounting software like QuickBooks Online or Wave or something Quicken, something like that may be, be for you. But what we found here at the Iowa Center, a lot of our clients, especially in those first few years of business, when they're kind of ramping up operations, uh, this method that we're about to go through um, can be kind of the easiest to use and understand and allow you to then kind of propel yourself into what accounting system you want to use in the future. Main thing is we got to reconcile your business accounts on a monthly basis, including your bank statement. Um, that'll allow you to prepare financial statements. The reason we prepare financial statements is so that you can see how your business is doing either in that moment or over a period of time. Are you profitable? Are you operating at a loss? Do you have a lot of assets on your books? Do you Are you carrying a really big proportion of debt on your books? Those are all important things um, that the financial statements, once they're prepared accurately, will allow you to start kind of analyzing with your business. Then you can start making decisions. Well, can I hire somebody? Can I grow my business? Can I offer a new product line? Those sort of things really start to become clear once you have a set of financial statements to read um, that, that reflect the, the performance of your business. So financial statements overview, we're going to go through this really quick so that I can get into the demo aspect of this, um, but basically just know the two financial statements that are going to be most important to you as a small business owner are going to be the income statement, which is the P&L that we're going to go through in detail today. And then the second is a balance sheet. Uh, the income statement is your performance over a matter of time from a profit and loss standpoint. All businesses in have revenue and they have operating expenses. And the net of those two numbers is your net income. That drives whether or not you are profitable or not, whether or not you have to pay tech taxes on that small business income. Um, and, and that can also be a big, huge factor in when you are applying for a loan or a small business grant opportunity. What is that bottom line? That's what they mean by that, that net income. Um, a balance sheet is a snapshot in time of your assets, liabilities, and equity account. So it's a little different. Income statement, revenue and expenses, net income aka profit and loss. Balance sheet is in a moment today, October 25th, 2022, how much cash do I have in my checking account? What is the balance on my credit card statement? What is the net book value of my assets of my business? Maybe I have a machine, maybe I have a, a van or something like that. That's what a balance sheet is. And then the net of that is your, your equity. So if you, your assets equal your liability plus your equity. So if you take your assets, all your cash, all your checking account, all that sort of stuff, all your fixed assets, you subtract off all that debt you owe on all that stuff. So you subtract out maybe your car payment, loan balance, maybe your credit card balance. What's left? Well, that's that's your equity. That's your net worth of your business, so to speak. And we'll talk a little bit about that. But in general, we're going to stick to P&L here as the big, big driver of today's conversation. So again, uh, we will send this PowerPoint out to all the participants today, you can read through this more uh, definitions, terms, that sort of stuff on your own. If you have questions on it, if you want to get into detail with it with me, give me a call. I'd be happy to sit here and chat with you guys about um, all of these accounting concepts, definitions of accounts, so to speak. Okay, let's get right into the example here. So today, what I have put together for us is basically a demo of how I approach and how I recommend the majority of our small business clients here at the Iowa Center approach their bookkeeping. And what I've done today is started basically with an example that I put together for one month of business transactions. And so um, before I get started, you know, I do have this PDF here. I think most of us are familiar with a bank statement, but your business, or if you don't have a business bank account, that's fine. You'll, you'll, use the same step, but you'll start with personal, your personal bank account. But for the sake of speed and for demonstration, we are going to assume that we are working off of a business bank account. So in within that business bank account, we're going to be looking at business transactions only. Again, that's the first step of good bookkeeping is separating that stuff out. If you have not done that, that's okay. You'll just start with your personal bank account. And basically you'll go through and you'll cross out all that personal stuff. And you'll just be looking at the business transactions only. So it can be done, it's just a little messier, it takes a little bit more work. But this is a bank statement that you'll look at. This is not uh, one that I have used numbers off of specifically, it's just a PDF I took offline just to explain a couple things. When you open up your business bank account, you will have a date or a period. In this case, it is up here on the top right, March 15, 2010 to April 18, 2010. You'll have a beginning balance, you'll have an ending balance and a date of that ending balance. You will have a transaction detail and this is the important part. So ideally you'll download 
for the sake of this argument, for this example, you will download your January bank statement from, from whatever your business bank account is. You'll go online. There should be an option, download that activity for January. You can do two things. You can download a PDF this way. And right, right away, we see all the withdrawals and all the deposits on the business bank account. So you've got the data you need there. Or you can actually, most banks will let you download the Excel activity directly to your computer. So you can actually download this in an Excel format already, which if you're comfortable with Microsoft Excel and that's something that you wanna do, it'll just save you a couple steps. Um, but in this example, basically what I have done is looked at a fake bank statement that I've kind of manipulated the transactions to kind of show what we wanna show for this month of January. And what I have done is basically pulled the withdrawals and deposits off of a bank statement for January and dumped them into Excel. And this is what that looks like. So the very, very first step of building your profit and loss is recording your business transactions. So you will potentially, if you'd like, use this template or another process, whatever, whatever you'd like. But basically, you need to start recording those individual business transactions. So I have literally gone to that January bank statement and I have pulled off every single line item from that January bank statement and listed it in Excel here in our template. I have every transaction from January 1st, 2022 through January 31st, 2022, deposits and withdrawals and, and a little bit of information that came through on the bank account. Basically, I know whether or not it was a check deposit, was it an electronic funds transfer. I know probably who the check came from. Most banks now will have a little copy of the check shows who it was written to, or there might be a little description in the electronic funds transfer line on your bank statement um, that shows, you know, where it was from. So like here on this one, you know, on this example, details, insurance, internet transfer. This isn't a really great example here for what details may show up on the bill payment side of things. Generally, you will see a little bit more description. If you used QuickBooks Online, for example, uh, that would be something that you may um, that may be something that you would see come through in the details. So just know I've listed all of the transactions for January in this bank reconciliation or bank transactions template that we've provided. Again, the first thing is to capture all the business transactions. The second thing is to identify them. And that's what we're gonna go through and do first step. So we're not even talking about building the PL here. We're just talking about capturing all the business transactions and organizing them so that you can then use that data that cumulative summarized data to build your PL for the month of January, which is what we're gonna do here. So in this example, the first thing that you need to know is that this is a t-shirt production company. So this is a made up company. This is what I use for my example, but basically what I do in this company, um, Treshawn, you do not need QuickBooks for this. Um, you would need the Excel template um, to, to do this and we will send the template out for you. And that's a good note of a reminder um, to the group. So today is kind of the education piece. We are gonna put this in practice on, I believe November 3rd and TJ, if you wanna jump in and confirm that for me, we will have a learning lab on the evening of November 3rd. Where you from can bring from in 5 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. And this will be in person. Um, in person. But Treshawn, yeah. you're actually in a class with us. And so this Thursday, we're actually going to go over some of the financials for our business plans. Okay. Yep. And then, you know, if, if you'd like to come in or, or stick around Thursday evening of next week, what we're going to ask is that people bring in their financial statements and we will actually sit with you while you, while you actually put this into practice and do it for a month of your own financial statements to kind of put this stuff in, into, into practice. Um, and and Treshawn, yeah, that's, that's very common. Um, that's very common that people don't have a lot of Excel experience and that's okay. That's why we built this template up so much over the years. TJ, myself, the rest of uh, the Iowa Center team have been working on this a lot. And so really it's gonna hopefully be a matter of just dropping the information into the right cells. And so that's something that we can probably help you out with. Again, yeah, TJ, you can also do all of this with pen and paper. You don't necessarily need to use Excel. We've just found that for a lot of people, it can be a nice tool um, to use it as opposed to a million pages of notebook paper or, or whatever other method you do. But instead of writing it down in an Excel grid format like this, if you wanted to do it on a piece of paper, same thing, no problem. Um, okay, so the very first thing, once you have all of your business transactions recorded for the month, 
um, or all of your transactions. Let's say this is your personal account. You'll have all of your transactions, business and personal, listed for the month of January here in the bank transactions tab. I would say if you are using your personal account, the first thing you should do is just go through and just right away black out everything that is not, um, uh, just black out everything that's not in a business transaction. For some reason, I have hit it. Oh, there it is. Okay. I was a little goofy, but what I would do is just go through and, and black out anything that's not business. So if you, all of your business is running through your personal account, go through, black out all the personal stuff, just leave your business stuff um, and you will be in good shape there. I don't know how to get this to lock. Always show. Thank you. Okay. Um, on that note, we know that we're looking at business transactions. So we're going to go through here. And the very first thing is I got to start basically describing to myself what this is. So this is the very first month of my t-shirt production business. I opened it January 1st, 2022. So you'll notice right away, my beginning bank balance up here is zero. That's the other thing we're doing here. Not only are we capturing all the business bank transactions for the sake of organizing them and, and grouping them together so we can build a P&L to actually tell us some information. We are also tracking every transaction to make sure that we know the money in, money out, and can trace it down to the exact cent as far as what your bank balance is at the end of the year. So on that note, we're going to go through here and look at this stuff. And right away, I know, okay, Alex pulls in check, $5,000 deposit. I know, and, and the other reason to do this uh, monthly is so that it's fresh in your mind. Because when you download these bank transactions for the month of January, there'll be some detail there for you to make some decisions and group them up. But the sooner you do it, the easier you're going to be able to remember it. So let's just assume it's February and not January and not October 2022. And I just remember this stuff right away. So Alex pulls in, I know right away that I did a personal deposit. I did a personal deposit into that account to, to help, um, you know, get the get the business going. It's hard to start a business with zero dollars. Um, next one, office landlord check. Okay, well that's rent. I know that I I, I rent a small a small space to 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 do this business. Verizon Wireless. Well, that's my phone bill. MediaCom. Okay, that's internet that I use to run. You know, I gotta have internet to do this stuff. Uh, take orders, process orders, all that stuff. Mid American. Um, Okay, so that's that's energy bills for the space. Um, fabric supplier, ink supplier. Okay, so that's gonna be like materials to produce the shirt, materials to produce the shirt. Let's stop there. That's just the first day of business. My very, very first day of operations. I deposited $5,000 in my bank, bank account. I wrote a couple checks, one for rent, one for the fabric supplies. Um, and then I used my debit card to incur my phone bill. I paid first month's energy up front and I paid first month's internet up front. So we knew we know a few things here, but we need a description. We need like an actual accounting um, term that we're gonna start to group these by account in similar buckets to then build a profit and loss statement out of it. And so right away, $5,000 personal deposit. First thought, maybe revenue. Well, of course I've got a deposit in my business bank account. That's revenue, right? Right away, I'm throwing a curveball at the very beginning. This is an owner contribution. That's an owner contribution of 5,000 bucks. Okay, we'll just leave that as the description here. Um, office landlord check. So we'll call that a, uh, we're gonna call that occupancy expense. Um, anytime you have something like rent, utilities, energy, stuff like that, we'll call it occupancy. This we're gonna call it telecommunications. Phone, internet, same thing, telecommunications, energy, uh, again, occupancy or utilities. You know, you can call that utilities there, no problem. Um, fabric supplier materials. Okay, this is like, a, you know, this is a cost of goods sold. You know, that's how much does it cost me? How much does it cost me to build the shirt? You know, that, or, or you could just call it materials cost for now. Um, and, and in fact, let's just call it materials cost for now to not get too confusing and stay, stay straight material. Okay. So we've got all of that kind of organized and we're going to start to use these over and over again as we say, see similar things. Now I, I did QBO deposit here, but we're not, we're not in QuickBooks deposit. Let's, let's go ahead and call it a PayPal deposit. Let's say I use, let's say I use PayPal, uh, 
for business and it's linked to my business bank account. Um, and, and, and that's actually where I'm getting my, actually where I'm getting my deposits from. So I'm gonna change this real quick just for the sake of consistency. And you'll notice there's several of them. Okay, so my PayPal deposit, my PayPal for business account is linked up to my business name, my business email, my business bank account. Anytime somebody buys something through my website, it uses PayPal to facilitate that transaction. That's just the way my point of sale is set up. And so every time I see a deposit from PayPal, right away, I know that's sales revenue because somebody has gone onto my website and they've ordered a t-shirt that I'm going to create and produce myself, but they, they've gone online and paid for it. So I know that's sales, um, that's sales revenue. I don't even need to put a note for it. Sales revenue. And in fact, on all these PayPal deposits, I'm going to do sales revenue all the way down, sales revenue, sales revenue, which is a good thing. You know, I'm in business. I want to have some sales. I want to make some money. So I'm just going through here and I am, I'm looking at all my client sales. So client eight, PayPal deposit. Here's a little different. I, I set, uh, this one was an expense. Sorry, get myself turned around just a little bit. Let me double check something. Okay, fabric supply, we'll do another fabric supply. And then a couple more here. Okay, so there's a sales revenue, there's a sales revenue, and there's a sales revenue right here. In fact, that's not quite the same, so I'll get out there. So I just real quick went through and identified all the sales revenue. So we're starting to fill stuff in here. Office Depot, okay, that's just office supplies. You know, I got a little little corner of the place that I rent that I actually am manufacturing these shirts. I'm, I'm producing them. I have a little desk in the corner, uh, you know, and I have several things. I have filing cabinets, I have pens, pencils, staplers. I have various documents like that. Um, and, and so I do have some office expense there or some office supplies. Um, again, I've got a Dell computer. So, you know, again, office expense. I bought myself a laptop. Um, I'm just going to call that PayPal fees. PayPal fees would be a software expense or a bank fee in this case. It would be a bank fee. Um, pay $25 a month for my Microsoft Outlook account for my, uh, you know, my, my Microsoft Excel. If you have to have a subscription to use this template, for example. So there's some software expenses there. I use micro, I use Adobe for PDF, for electronic signatures, for things like that, for invoicing. Um, so I have software there. Uh, you've already identified the sales revenue, you know it's very large. So in this case, um, I got my first, you know, my first two sales ever were very small. Just kind of knocking off the, knocking off the cobwebs, checking out my business, that sort of stuff. And then I got a giant order in for like 500 shirts. You know, they went ahead and they ordered it. They paid the invoice, all that stuff. And I thought to myself, oh, crap, how am I going to fulfill an order of 500 shirts, just me by hand making these shirts in my small rented uh, office and production facility? Well, the question is, I can't and I need to invest in some more some more equipment. And so first things first, I went ahead and I paid $2,725. Um, this was for a we're just going to call it a T-shirt production equipment. I'm not really a t-shirt producer, so I don't know exactly how to make them. Um, but we are going to call this large equipment. That's large equipment. Anything over, yes, anything over $2,500, you are going to consider large equipment. Any equipment under $2,500, you're going to consider small equipment. I'll show you that here in a second. Um, I bought a t-shirt production. I also bought a t-shirt like printing equipment. That one was a little bit lower than 2,500. So I'm gonna call it small equipment right there. Um, oh, and then I bought a van, okay? I mean, I figured, okay, I'm going to all this trouble. I'm just gonna, large bulk orders. I'm gonna get in my own van and I'm gonna drive them. My customers are local, so I'm gonna ship them myself. Again, oops, large equipment. So right now we are simply going through and we are, oops, and I can't get on the right line there. Large equipment. Okay, we are going through here and we are, again, we are just telling ourselves, reminding ourselves what all these transactions were, providing enough detail that we can group these into similar accounting because, again, we're just doing one month. 
So as the months go by, as January, February, March, April, May goes by, you're going to have other similar things. Maybe you grow so much that you buy another van, or maybe you have to buy another t-shirt production equipment. So you're going to start using these accounts over and over again. You've already seen that with the sales revenue. We're using those over and over again. Here's some more sales. I know that because it's coming from PayPal and it's got a client name on the PayPal statement that they sent me. I know that I had sales. Going back down here. Okay, I'm running out of supplies. So, you know, I need more materials to produce the shirts. I need more ink to stamp them with. Um, you know, so I've got those identified, got some more sales revenue. I decided, okay, I might look at the Salesforce thing, do a monthly Salesforce uh, to start building a client management, you know, tool. There's all these CRMs out there where you can basically build databases of your clients, you know, especially if you have recurring clients or, or unique clients for unique orders. Maybe there's reasons you want to use something like that. So I put a software example in there. I'm running out of office supplies. So I got an office expense there. I got some postage, had to mail something in. Um, January 2022, I finally got around to uh, filing my LLC formation documents with the Iowa Secretary of State. So we have professional fees, accounting firm, professional fees. They helped me uh, just get set up with my, yeah, you know, you don't, you don't have to do this. <laughs> Please don't call the Iowa Center. But in my example, I paid an accounting firm to advised me on whether or not I should be an LLC or not. Um, they advised me on how and actually helped me apply for my EIN number, that, that social security number, so to speak, for your business. Um, you know, they did several other kind of consulting things for me just to make sure that I was doing the right permits, all that sort of stuff, and charged me 250 bucks for it. So some professional fees. And then the law firm, you know, I hate to say it, LLC formation, I took the easy way out. I paid a law firm $575 to create my articles of organization, which were which is required for an LLC filing with the state of Iowa. Again, you don't have to go that route. That's the most expensive route. But if you are looking at becoming an LLC, give us a call. We can walk you through that process, give you some resources to help you figure out what the most cost-effective way for you to do that is. But in this case, simple professional fees. They help me create my LLC. Another bulk order for sales revenue uh, down here. Okay, I needed some more materials. So I'm going to hit that real quick. Uh, okay, credit card payment. This is a visa payment. I look here at payment to visa, 2000 bucks. That's some red flag going out to me. That's not just an expense out of my, my debit card out of my business bank account. That's an actual credit card payment uh, for business. And so I'm just simply going to call it that. Credit card payment. Okay. Uh, CN and I'm not really sure what that's for yet. I'll have to go look at my credit card statement here in a second. Uh, CNA, uh, that's just insurance. Most businesses have general liability insurance, something like that, some sort of just general management insurance for your business. Um, very common on all businesses to see some sort of insurance cost there, um, usually charged monthly. We've got some more sales revenue, another bulk quarter. Um, and then here's a, here's a weird one. I got a $2,000 deposit. It came from the Association of T-Shirt Producers, and it was for a check. So it didn't come through PayPal deposit. I, I didn't sell them any shirts, um, but I remember back to January, and I think, oh, oh, of course. I traveled out to Chicago, and I actually was paid to give an hour-long speech to other T-Shirt producers in America um, and just gave them my advice, my, my do's and don'ts, my, my expertise on how to operate a business like this. And the Association of T-Shirt T-shirt producers gave me $2,000. Well, that's revenue, but it's it's other it's other revenue. It's not sales revenue because you didn't really sell any of your products or anything like that. We are going to keep it within this same business because it's so similar. It's related to this industry, to this market, to this product that you're producing. We're just going to call it other revenue. In essence, it's consulting revenue. I took some travel to get there. Get some airfare to fly to Chicago. Stay in the hotel one night. Um, and I did, I did rent a car while I was there so I could go around, uh, get around town. Um, and I did, I, I ate lunch once. Wow, low, low bill for a travel weekend, but I, I, I ate at Wendy's one time. Um, and then at the very, very end of the year, you'll notice January 31st, Alex pulls in, this was not EFT, this was a check. I wrote a check to myself out of my business for $3,000. So what would that be? That's not an expense because I wrote it to myself. I'm not paying payroll. I'm just a sole proprietor. I'm, I'm a single member LLC. 
It's just me. I'm the only owner. I don't pay myself a salary. So just like way up here, when I, when I put the money in, owner contribution, well, way down here at the end, owner distribution. Eh, on the wrong line, of course. Owner distribution. Right there. Okay. So the glory of this now is that we have for the month of January, all of the information we need to build a profit and loss statement for the month of January. We have our beginning balance of zero, first, first year in existence, just opened up the bank account on January 1st. If you look at all the deposits and add them up, 24,820.48, all the withdrawals, add them up. 22,683.28 for a remaining balance of 2,137.20. Neither good or bad, that just is what it is. That's what your bank balance is as of January 31st, 2022. If you were to look at your bank statement, you should be able to see that number on the very, you should be able to find the ending balance, January 31st, in this case, it's right there. Uh, again, I'm not using this bank statement as my example, so it doesn't match exactly, but it would. On whatever bank statement you're using as your source document, it would tie to that. And as long as it does, you know you have captured every one of your business transactions. Step one is done captured them all. Step two, identify by description what, well, what was it? The deposit, the expense, all that stuff. Step three is actually then filling out your profit and loss statement based off of these groupings that we just put together. Okay, and I'm going to show you how to do that here right now. So let's get this up a little bit and let's look at the profit and loss. So this template, when you first see it, will come like this. You will have 12 columns, January through December, giving you a full year. Because in reality, you're going to be doing this bank, this bank tracing, this bank grouping, uh, bank reconciliation every single month. So in reality, when you're going through this, I definitely recommend doing it month at a time, one month on to the next. Um, and you will fill in the profit and loss by the column that you're on. And so in this case, we are in January and hide everything else because we don't really care about the rest of that stuff. We're just working on the month of January right now. So if I am going through this and I want to figure out what my sales were for the month of January, I'm going to hit the equals button here. And this is a little bit of Excel how to going on. But if you hit the equals button, you're going to tell the cell, okay, well, my sales value is going to be equal to, I go over here on the bank transactions and click it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through here now and I'm gonna find every one of my sales revenue accounts. So not owner contributions. Okay, there's one. I can hit plus, there's another one. There's another one. I'm just going down and I'm adding up all of the sales revenue cells for January. Not other revenue, that's not sales revenue. I click OK. And I got sales now populated into my profit and loss statement of 17,820. Right away, other revenue. I mean, I was just in there. I know right away I've got another revenue item right here, 2,000. We just talked about that. Okay, 19,820. Feel pretty good about that. Let me look over here again, real quick, and say, okay, well, you know, I know 24,820, though, was my total loss. Sorry, total deposits. Let me get my calculator pulled up. So my total deposits, if I look at my bank transactions, was 24,820. 24,820 minus what did I just record for revenue? 19,820. So gosh, I'm missing $5,000 right off the bat here um, somehow. And if I go through here and look, Oops. All right, a little confusion there. Had a couple things messed up. But this line item is sales revenue. I was going back through this and I just was like, what's going on? But 248, 2048 minus 1928, 2048. So I don't have $5,000 on my PL for sales or for revenue. Why is that? Well, when I go over here to the bank, bank revenue, I go through here. Okay, well, I got all this stuff. I've got it all up. There's, there's my 19428 The difference is this $5,000 owner contribution. And at the very beginning, I reminded us that 
owner contributions, personal money that you put into the business, that's not revenue to the business. That's not included on your P&L. This is where the balance sheet comes into play. So on the balance sheet side of things, it is so it's not revenue. It does not go over here on this revenue side of things. It has nothing to do with your net income. It's a balance sheet item. It's assets, liability, and equity. And in fact, it's an equity item. So equity, equity is made up of prior year profit that you kept in the business, plus your current year profit of the business, plus whatever personal money you put in, minus whatever money you took out personally then because we're all in in business to try to make a profit walk away live our lives you know pay for our expenses and so you'll see those identified right here in this section you see i've already got the template pulling in the 1980 2048 that's coming from what we've put in so far on the pnl all we've got is revenue no expenses yet so net income 19820 and that's pulling into the balance sheet 19820 but what we know is i also gave five thousand dollars I also gave $5,000 to the business as indicated right here by the very first transaction on my bank statement. Okay, moving forward. Now let's talk about expenses. We've got all the deposits in there. Let's talk about expenses. So as I go through here, let me just update this a couple for a couple things. Um, we've got here occupancy. Go with that. So let's start with occupancy first. So occupancy, the same thing. I'm going to hit equal sign. I'm going to go to bank transactions and I'm going to pick out everything that was occupancy. So that would be rent. That would be energy costs. And I think that's it for now. Um, that's it for now. We'll leave it at that. Next thing we'll do is keep going. So that you know, and normally when I go through here, I will kind of maybe X these off as I go, if it helps you stay organized. For some people it does, but just for now, I know that I've done all of these ones, so I'm gonna gray them out. And as I go through here, I will gray out the other ones. So I've just done rent and I did, did utilities for one, 185, okay. What's my next, ex next expense? Well, I've got telecommunications. So if I go over your tele telephone and internet, Okay, that's a pretty obvious one. Bank transactions, phone plus internet, 194, back to bank transactions. I'm gonna gray those out. We've got them. Fabric supplier, ink supplier. Okay, those again, those are my materials. That is what is actually going into the production of the shirts. Um, to me, that is a true cost of goods sold. Um, sometimes you may see a PL where it has like a materials or supplies cost down here. In reality, because it is a direct component of the unit that I'm selling, I will go ahead and mark it as a cost of goods sold. So if I go back to bank transactions, I'm looking for all the materials. So I've got materials here, materials here. Looks like I've got materials here and materials here. That should be all my materials. So cost of goods sold, 1,050. Okay. Go back and gray those out so I don't get lost. I don't want to be double counting. You know, as diligent as you can be as you're going through this, the better, so that you don't have to, um, you know, spend a bunch of time picking and choose or, you know, hunting and pecking through what maybe you missed. And so, on that note here, right away, I do notice that there was another one down here. Here's some materials that I missed. And so, I'm just going to add it on. I've got my cost of goods sold. I'm just going to add a plus sign and I'm going to click right out of materials. Okay. Okay. So we're just moving right along. We're getting close here to kind of being able to read this stuff, figure out what it all is, what it means. Um, next thing I want to do is office expense. Looks like it's kind of the next thing on my list here as far as what we need to put onto the PL. So I've got a couple office expenses here. So I'll just start there. Office expense. We are going to do this. Bank transactions. Office expense. We are going to call the computer office expense. Um, in fact, we're going to call bank fees office expense as well. And then we have some small equipment down here. We have that small t-shirt printing equipment. Basically anything that's less than $2,500, I'm going to call for an call as office expense for this example, um, including this small, small deal right here. We got some more Office Depot expense there and postage I'm going to call its office expense as well. 
And again, I'm just going through here and I'm just looking and trying to group up, trying to group up similar expenses. And so again, that was office expense from Home Depot. That was a laptop I bought myself. That was the t-shirt printing equipment that was under $2,500, uh, a little bit more office expense down there and the postage. Three seven fifty six, almost. I didn't quite get there, and so that is where things get a little complicated. So I go back through, and I'm like, "What did I miss?" So I got postage. I got expense there. I got small expense there. I got bank fees, office expense, office expense, and there it is. Three eight forty one eighty two. So that those items all together total my three eight forty one eighty two of office expense for this month. Okay, moving right along. Looks like I've got some software expenses. I'm gonna go ahead and do some software expense. Let's just uh, take one of these. Um, we've already done utilities. Utilities is in occupancy, so I'm just gonna go ahead and, and take over that expense line, call it software, go over here, and again, we're just picking the software expenses out. We're, we're picking. Microsoft out, we're picking Adobe out, and then there should be some sales scores, which we just picked. Okay. So this can be kind of a tedious process, but I promise you it's worth it. And we're gonna talk about why it's worth it here in just a minute, as soon as I get this finished. Tools and equipment, we've already included that in office expense, so you can forget about that. I'll just delete that out of there. Um, contract labor, you may have contract labor if you hire somebody to do a little bit of this or that, you write them a check for a couple hundred bucks or, or, or whatever it is, you'll have a contract labor. Repairs and maintenance, maybe you got to have somebody come and work on the interior of your building or work on your heating or, or HVAC unit and that's not part of the lease to be covered by the landlord. Maybe you're getting stuck with that cost, well, you'd have a repairs and maintenance. Uh, I don't think you'd have taxes as far as um, property taxes, things like that, but um, you may. Um, credit card expenses, uh, we'll talk about that here in a second. And then, oh, legal and professional. I know for a fact that we've got that one. So I'm going to go over here and try to pull those ones out. Uh, we had some expenses, I believe, down here for, yes, for the Iowa Secretary of State, for the accounting firm, and for the law firm. And so there's, those were some of the expenses there. Uh, let me go out and clear a couple more bank transactions off. We already recorded the software. We recorded the software and we recorded the fees. Okay, we're left with a few items here. Most of these are gonna be fairly straightforward. Uh, we do have a travel line item here um, under travel. I am going to come here and grab whatever those remaining items would be. In this case, we've got airfare, we've got Hilton and we've got car rental, and in fact, we've got meals that I'm just gonna dump into travel for now. Um, and that was my trip to Chicago for consulting. Um, I could have put meals there, but in this, for the sake of speed, we're just gonna call it all travel. Just a few line items left. I see insurance right there. So I'm gonna just go right to insurance equals bank transactions insurance. Okay. There we go. Um, after I go through here, okay, I just want to look at these. I got a large equipment item, a large equipment item. I've got, ooh, another materials cost. So, nope, that's a credit card payment. We'll talk about that in a second. Owner distribution. Okay, we'll talk about the easy one first. Owner distribution. So, okay, so pause. Let's take a look. What does the PL look like? PL, we've got the majority of our sales in there. We've got a little bit of cost of materials, you know, for actually creating those t-shirts. And then we've got various operating expenses, whether it was travel, insurance, rent and utilities, uh, office supplies, yada, 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 that's there. Right now, we're showing a profit of 11362 And that's the whole point of this. We're trying to get an accurate set of financial statements to get us down to this number right here, because this is going to tell the whole story on how much taxes you owe, how profitable you are you know, what do I need to do with my business going forward? Can I take some of that money home with me? Should I leave it in the business? All of those different questions are going to be start to become more clear now that you know how profitable you were for the month of January. Important to remember, this is just January. You do this for every month to figure out how you were for the whole year. So we have a couple weird ones here. 
couple times I've mentioned, if you have a transaction that an, an expense item that is over $2,500, log that away. That's going to be treated a little bit differently. That would be this one and this one. Uh, same with if you took money out of the business personally, or if you did a credit card payment to your business credit card, those are all handled a little bit differently. Those aren't just straight expense items. I want to talk to you for a second about that. Owner, let's start with the owner distribution at the end of the month. A lot of people would immediately think $3,000, I took that out, that's salary, right? I would go over here to profit and loss and I would find a, you know, I would call this wages and I would say, okay, right there, $3,000 of wages and my, my net income goes down to eight three sixty two twenty. dollars No, that's not right. The only way that would be right is if you are paying yourself a salary you are reporting that to the IRS on a form W-2 at the end of the year. You are withholding and paying Social Security and Medicare taxes on those wages and reporting those to the to the uh, U.S. Treasury uh, every quarter. Uh, and, and then you may have other uh, payroll liabilities such as federal unemployment tax, state unemployment tax, yada, yada, yada. So you have to go through a whole payroll setup process to actually be paying yourself a salary there. Otherwise, that would be zero and that would be considered an owner contribution or sorry, an owner distribution. Just like the money you put into the business was an owner distribution to equity, the money you take out to an extent is owner distribution of your equity as well. So this $3,000 again does not go on your p &L. It gets right here. It's a current year distribution. I'm going to go equal minus because it's a negative right there. And we can see right away our equity starting to fill out. So far I've got 11,362.20 of net income or of profit. And I've got plus 5,000 money I put in minus 3,000 money I took out. Um, and we're starting to see an equity number there populate of 13,362. So that's how you deal with stuff like that, that owner contribution distribution stuff. It can be really confusing. It's very, very common for small business owners. Let's talk about this one. Let's talk about a credit card payment. So I mentioned, uh, you know, business, small business owners may have a credit card payment. They may have something uh, that they don't have the cash for maybe right now, but they still want to incur the expense. They want the equipment. In this case, back in the middle of January, I said to myself, okay, one t-shirt production equipment wasn't enough. So I went on the credit card. We haven't looked at this tab yet, but I went on the credit card. And I actually charge two seven twenty five to the credit card to buy a second uh, T-shirt production equipment. Normally, I would say, okay, take that charge, pop it over here, and that would be a credit card expense two seven twenty five in this case. It's gonna net income go down. That normally would be the case. So if you're doing oper if you're doing operating supplies, Office Depot, some small charges here or there, you go to your credit card transactions, you pull the charges out dump them right onto the profit and loss statement. Credit card charges, when they're incurred, they go on your p and if, if they're business expenses. Anything over $2,500 from an equipment standpoint is a fixed asset in the eyes of the IRS if you're using the safe harbor rules. So in this case, 2725 above 2500 So I'm not going to expense it. Well, where do you put it? I've got a credit card transaction of 2725 Where do, Where the heck do I put it? If it's not on the PL, it's on the balance sheet. So in this case, 2725 going, actually, I'll just do equals um, credit card transactions plus 2725 going right there. Um, but I also know that I had a, a loan on that. So that was 2725 loan because I charged up to a credit card. So yeah, I've got the fixed asset, but I also have a credit card payable amount now. The 2725. So I've gone ahead and thrown that on there. When I go back, we'll talk about this credit card payment in a second. We just recorded the we just recorded the charge. So we, we we recorded this part of it. I looked on my credit card and I saw one January 22nd, 2022, a payment of 2000 I saw that over here. Okay, there's my two thousand dollar credit card payment. It all makes sense now. I used, I, I paid off $2,000. Okay, good. So again, you don't take this 2000 and just drop it on here as a $2,000 credit card expense. That's not, that's not how we do this. You would have already recorded the credit card expense when you incurred the charge right here. 
the payment itself, this $2,000, this $2,000 payment on your bank rec, that's just going to reduce the liability. So the liability started at, at $2,725, but you paid $2,000 of it off. The credit card balance is $7.25 on your balance sheet. If you go to liabilities, credit card payable, credit card transactions, you should see that balance. We got the two seven twenty five dollars of charge. We got the $2,000 of payment. Zero plus $2,725 minus $2,000 equals $7.25. You're good. You're in great shape. Your bank transactions, we've already got the template set up. It knows $2,137.20 after accounting for that. Um, and, and you'll see on the balance sheet, we've got that just directly already, already defaulted to the 2137.20. So last but not least, we got a couple more things here to do. Uh, we have two more large equipment items. Seven, 2,725, uh, t-shirt production equipment, $6,500 van. Both of those are over $2,500. So there's that rule again. We do not just sit here and go 8725 over here under equipment. You know, I, you could just go ahead and say, well, you know, that's office expense on this 3841.82. Just, just drop that extra 8725 on there, right? It's an expense. Not so fast. You have to consider your options for depreciation. And so because this is over $2,500, per equipment item, you have the option to put it on your balance sheet. So instead of just recording the office expense here, we are going to go back over to our fixed assets. I'm going to add the 2725. That was the first equipment. So we have two t-shirt protection equipment and the van, $6,500 van. 11,950 on the fixed assets over there, okay? And all of a sudden, holy crap, you take a look at the balance sheet, little side note for the balance sheet, Total assets, 1,407.20 equals total liabilities plus total equity, 1,407.20, and I'm in balance. That's the final check that you've done everything you need to do to record all of the transactions of your business. At this point, you could consider yourself done. You could consider yourself having a completed financial statement, set of financial statements for January. January profit and loss, you have your sales, Minus your expenses gives you profit of 11,362.20. You go over to your balance sheet. There's that 11,362.20. You know, you also gave $5,000 of your own money to the business. You took out $3,000 to do whatever you want with it. It's your money. And you're left with equity of 13,362.20. Plus that little bit of debt that you have left equals 14,087.20. And that matches your total assets, which is your checking account balance plus your fixed assets. 1408720. Your financial statements are now done, except for one final choice you have at the end of the year. If you are a business that is in uh, the habit of acquiring equipment or vehicles greater than $2,500, just remember that you will potentially have yourself some, you potentially will have yourself from some depreciation. And so in this case, 11,950, we'll just call it divided by five years. We're going to do minus 2,390 of depreciation. I don't know what, yep, yeah, okay. And then go over here to depreciation, 2,390. What I just did there, instead of taking the full deduction for the $11,950 of true cost to you as a business owner for that equipment, instead of taking that full 11,950 as expense, I'm only taking 2,390 of it this year in Jan well, in January. So it's a little goofy here uh, as an expense in this month. And then the rest of it will be carried over into future years. So then next year for 2023, you take another 2,390. The year after that, you take 2,390, yada, 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 so on and so forth until you're done, until the next book value is done. And so in this case, you put a little depreciation on there, about 9,000 net income, you're all in balance and, and everything's gravy. So that is the full uh, process of how to create a set of financial statements, both a P&L and a balance sheet, just based on your bank transactions alone. Now, if that's something that you're interested in and want to come in, again, a reminder, we have November 3rd Learning Lab to sit here and work with you one-on-one -on, -one on this. 
Thank you so much, Alex. Um, I know that was a lot of information. Um, just a reminder, we will have a link to this recording. Um, and for those that attended, we will send out an email with a copy of the presentation um, and a copy of the templates um, that was used today or something similar um, to these. Um, so thank you so much, Alex, for taking the time today to share such valuable information with our audience. And thank you to the audience for being here, engaging and asking questions. I also wanted to take a moment to share information about some of our upcoming um, programs. Alex, how did Alex figure the depreciation? Um, I, I think that is something that is just figured out um, over time. Um, and I could give you Alex's information, like if you needed to needed help figuring out the depreciation for your business, um, we can um, reach out to you and give you his information so you could work on that further. Now, I would just say, TJ, on that note, just in this example here, it was a very, very broken down. And in fact, it's not even actually correct. Basically, um, what, what it should have been was I just did a straight line method. So what I took is the 11,000. Um, the, what I did is I took the 11,950 and I divided it by five years, which would be considered the useful life of those assets in the eyes of the IRS. So really you'd be looking at $2,390 of depreciation expense a year. For this example, I should have divided it by 12 because we're 12. just looking at it per month. So it should have been 199 there. 199 right there, uh, balance sheet number would have been minus 199. And then all of a sudden we're all back in balance at that 13,888,20 number like that. So accumulated depreciation up there on the balance sheet, just recording. So really, in that case, if you were to look at it for February, you still have $11,751 left to depreciate going month to month and month down the line for the next five years is the way that works. Yes. Now, the thing about depreciation is it's very complicated tax law. You will want to basically get to this point where you are at zero on that, zero on that, and then make a decision because it's very much a tax centered uh, question at that point. Um, and you can call in again, like TJ said to me, we can set up a time one-on-one. -on -one. So if you did buy large equipment, if you did buy vans, let's talk about it. Let's, let's develop a plan so that you can go into your tax accountant meeting prepared with what you know you wanna do. Cause you have options here. You could take accelerated depreciation, you could take straight line, or you could potentially take the whole thing as an expense in the first year. I didn't really talk about that little little Easter egg, but a lot of people do have an option of expensing the fixed asset all in the first year, despite what I said in my presentation. Um, so again, it is a very much tax centered question at the end of the year. All right, thank you, Alex, for answering that question. Okay, so about some of the upcoming program, every Tuesday in person and virtual, we have a small business accountability group where entrepreneurs meet and share their business goals, report their successes and share knowledge and support each other in reaching those goals. Um, as Alex was um, speaking, we have a learning lab November 3rd from 5 to 6.30 p.m. That is in person and it will be a profit and loss statement learning lab. Um, you can actually bring in your bank statements or whatever statements that you may have for your income and expenses. And we'll have a team here to help you get started on your profit and loss statement. That is November 3rd. On November 4th, we have Story of Each East Village. Um, the Story of is a program that's focused on Iowa entrepreneurs and small business owners making a mark in their communities. Um, so this will be the story of small business owners in East Village that will be in person if you would like to attend that. Um, um, for any of our programming, if you would like additional information, please feel free to check out our website at www.theiowacenter.org. With that, I will close with um, my one piece of advice that I have for us all, and that is to love what you do and do what you love. Have a great every have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody.